Nei here. Welcome to the most recent update of the LEGO Hogwarts Castle. Here we go. Look at this mess. Like people have been asking me, what does it look like when you're building? What is your process? Well, this should give you an idea about the process. It's a complete mess, which I usually fix before filming, but today is just, I'm done. This uh, is a problem for another day. Now, why is everything taken apart? My uh, initial idea was to work on some different things regarding the construction here of the roof, but since the parts which I require to begin the extension of the Great Hall itself are still not here, I uh, wanted to work on the kitchens, but before I got to that, uh, it really occurred to me the wh what about this section here, just underneath the foyer, because uh, if you remember, we had these different compartments here, like one here, one in the middle, and another one on to the right. Basically, three drawers that were separate, making this little not really connected piece. And the reason we had that was the over here we had these arches that were basically sitting two in the middle and to the sides as well. And that was because the construction here was not sturdy enough to support the weight. But since then, I've had a few revelations and one of them was that why don't we use two rows of Technic bricks on several spots. Now we have one here in the front, and there's like two more underneath that you probably can't see, but you can see these, these panels. There's like three rows of panels here, another three rows over here that basically act as supports of these Technic bricks. Now we have uh, two of them stacked together basically really well with pins. So they form this really nice support. Now, if you even if you press like this, it will not fall apart because it's all being like handled by these uh, by these Technic bricks. I just knocked the camera off from my face here. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to be using that same idea over there when the kitchens are, and we're gonna use them uh, again from side to side, but we'll talk about that later. So since that problem has been solved, now we have these three trays were transformed into this one big tray. And the big tray looks a lot better. It basically has all the other stuff that is uh, that we had before, but it's all connected. And uh, yeah, we have the nearly headless Nick here with a brassiere. Now we have this little corridor that leads to the half hope of common room over here. Bit of a weird interior that I've placed. Not really polished it just yet, just random stuff that I've placed. And over here we have Neville in this little other corridor, placed a bench here, some kind of snake, a spider, chocolate frog on a bench and some night here. Now, this little thing I'm testing here just to see how it looks. Basically with these uh, slopes, in inverted slopes, whenever you have a double wall, you could use them, I think, and create this kind of gap. Because this is uh, it's not really the dungeon part yet, but kind of the minus one level of the castle and underneath would be the dungeons, at least in my perspective. So uh, this is kind of a way to show damage to the wall itself. And basically, it should be like a crack. And I've placed a few of them uh, here and there. Now there is uh, one here as well, another one there. Uh, I'm not really sure if I like them, but it's just something that I'm uh, testing out. Now, one important thing that I've done is remember before uh, we had uh, basically this broom. Where is it? There we go. We had this broom over here that was resting and we had this little gap and you would put the broom inside and basically the end of the broom would get into this Technic brick and you would be able to slide the passage over here to the left. 
But since then, I decided that I don't really like that. So we've made it a lot more sophisticated, let's say. So now we basically have this gear here, which at some point I would like to replace with some kind of a element, maybe like an owl piece, although an owl piece would be too big to rotate anyway. So we have this gear here that when you spin it around, like it removes the crates. And I know that these are not really crates currently, but I have ordered the pieces that are really represent these two by two wooden uh, tiles who cover these with them when at some point. But yeah, use your imagination. So these are crates. And when you spin this, basically it shows the entrance. And over here, you can even see the Hufflepuff crest over here. Now, this is one of the things that I decided to place. It's kind of these uh, pieces here. And then we'll have these one by one circular tiles in the basically the colors of the uh, house they're representing so it kind of signals you know that this is the entrance of half of path although I would really like to replace them with maybe uh, this is kind of nougat color maybe with bra with uh, I don't know what that color is called basically it's orange this one yeah, this one, it's kind of a uh, different thing. It's called orange. This one is called nougat, I think. But anyway, with this one or the yellow one, some something like this. Basically, we'll have the same idea going in front of the Gryffindor common room and etc. etc. With the colors, I think it's a little nicer uh, uh, thing to do now. Obviously, over here, as before. Now I don't know if I can show you properly with one hand. This latch here can be lifted uh but now with one hand i can't really do it and there we go uh i had to turn the camera off there for a second obviously there is a latch here and underneath there will be a stairwell that leads to the uh half of common room now i have placed the tiles over here just so um they connect in order for this to be easier to go in here now this is again uh, pretty easy to put in, especially with with two hands. But now with one hand, it might take me like maybe a minute or more to do because yeah, there we go. Actually, it's a lot easier than I thought. I basically need to be patient and not to really force it too much. Uh, with one hand, this is a real pain, actually. I don't know if you want to be seeing this. Like, it's not really fun. Oh yeah, I'm definitely putting the camera down. There we go. And you put it back in, and it has the same idea as before. Unlike before, we had the three kind of separate uh drawer handles just to pull it out now we have just one in the middle and it's really important to connect this wall over here to this wall and over here otherwise this is just coming apart because there is still quite a lot of pressure like everything that's on top really wants to come down and it's uh, especially when i do this and everything like is falling downwards and wants the weight to go down like it really needs to be tight so it's very important to connect here and here, even as it is. This is uh, the bricks are coming, but maybe this should be a bit lower, so it has a bit more kind of a sturdy connection. Or maybe I should just change the slopes here, but it's not really important currently. Regarding the flooring here, I was really conflicted what exactly to do, because I had a lot of these uh, dark bluish gray, light bluish gray two by twos that I really wanted to implement somehow, but didn't really like them the way they were before we had them over here and before we had this arch over here that I decided actually it's not really needed anymore when this is connected because it's making it more difficult to film and also doesn't really there is no point to have an arch here anymore and uh, I decided to kind of combine like the tan walls with the dark tan borders in a way and these uh various uh, two by twos just so you can kind of connect anything you want plus uh, i didn't really want the floor here to be full 
dark tan uh, like uh, over here and the inside corridor of the courtyard. Now I'm not going to show you the courtyard in this video because I'm doing something different there that I want to kind of show you once it's finished and because I'm still waiting on parts it's not finished and I kind of want to have that wow effect because it really looks pretty when it's finished uh, but yeah we'll talk about that next time uh, now I think the end result here is uh, fine uh, I do feel that this kind of area still needs a bit more detail I'm thinking about obviously we have a lot of empty walls like we could put something here um, something here definitely like some portraits I don't know if I want to use more stickers I've just placed this one over here uh, kind of as a test to see if I like it or not uh, maybe I will either use a mixture of stickers or maybe just create with bricks kind of frames with portraits inside them something like that uh, maybe we could put some more like animals over here or I don't know some other things I don't really want to put more torches or braziers. I think we have enough of those. We have already four brazier, four torches and two braziers, two benches. So kind of uh, mm, want to put some other things. But yeah, obviously that we have some empty walls, especially this one here really sticks out. So yeah, I will uh, probably put a few more stickers, maybe one, two more stickers because I have plenty of them and uh, we'll create something with bricks eventually. But I just kind of want to look at it a little bit as I always do. I know I mention this every time, but it's it's very important because I, sometimes you are not always inspired, you know, like uh, not fully and you want to finish something completely and say, okay, well, this is done. Well, it, that's, it, it's a great idea in theory, but the process of creativity is a lot more complicated and if you rush things it, you will not get a satisfactory result at least that is my experience with the issue so yeah now that everything here is done like the whole construction is done and we just need to put little finishing touches here and there uh, basically put like a rough draft with things that you want because yeah i want to have benches i want to have a few braziers a few minifigs this knight for example uh nearly headless snake and even this chest here, I really knew they want to have a chest over here. But since we have all these elements now, we're not sure how exactly they're going to be interact with one another, but we've placed them this way and we just look at it from time to time and uh, eventually the ideas will come. At least that's how my brain works. Now, uh, I would uh, suggest you use a similar way of uh, doing things without rushing it. But then again, I can't really know what's in everybody's head and uh, maybe this will not work for you but i would give it a go i want to show you because over here you know you see only this and everything else is covered but basically we have these uh kind of i think they're used for tr tree trunks usually these two by two uh, cylinders but i kind of want to replace them with these barrels that actually are barrels but I don't have uh, all that many of them because I will need, well, at least five of them for the front, but I don't want only the front ones to be barrels. I want uh, everything to be barrels. And I think I need a total of, uh, I think it's three. Each each row is three. So then we will need uh, like 15 of them. And uh, yeah, I don't have enough. I mean, I have enough, but they're not in the same color now these are dark brown and i have in reddish brown a couple and then a few in black i think i just never bother so basically i want to put these kind of barrels in the end and instead of this cap we want to put um well maybe a cap in the same color obviously it will be in dark brown and on top we'll have a tile two by two with a printed uh wooden kind of uh element eventually so that will be the finishing touches there while i was building this and kind of making the supports over here now again it's very important for this entrance here not to be covered by these technic bricks that are obviously hidden but even at some point i'm hoping that there will be a way to put this a little camera inside so you have the experience of kind of walking inside the castle i know the technology is still not completely there but i'm reading some interesting things that maybe you can put like a little little camera inside that you can use to walk 
through the castle. And it's really important for me to everything to be connected. And even though we can't really get inside here and see, I want this archway over here to be facing this archway over there. So a minifig could technically go through the door, you know. It needs to make sense in my head. But while I was doing that, I uh, was thinking that once I begin the uh, process of rebuilding the Great Hall, making it larger, now I really want these windows, just as before, if you remember my explanations, to not be facing a wall. And since these rows will be doubled uh, after the rebuild, I think, if my math is correct, one of the windows inside here will be facing this wall over there. That's kind of, yeah, this, this thing over here. And I don't know, like, will I have to move that wall? I'm not sure. I really don't want to do that. It would be a real pain to do. Because I remember that that was really, uh, I made a really sturdy construction there because it needs to support a lot of the weight of uh, this floor here. So recreating it would be a real problem, I think, because we'll have to like move everything, but we'll see. Um, basically, the process would be, the most dangerous thing would be to uh, remove safely these sturdy uh, supports for the roof, because I made them really sturdy. Wasn't really planning of uh, removing them again, but we'll see. I think it should be fine. That's the only thing that scares me. Like taking down these walls and these these towers on both sides is not really scary because uh, I've done it like three times already, and uh, not, I know I can do it again. And even the process of building them is kind of fun uh, because you're building outside and inside at the same time with the interior and the gargoyles. So it's really fun. But this here, this is kind of scaring me. But uh, yeah, those parts are on the way and they are almost here, I believe. Uh, so next time, next time you should be able to see. I'm actually concerned whether I'll be able to do this in one go, but uh, hopefully, hopefully I will be able to, as long as I have the time. I'm really busy recently. A quick view of the inside of this mechanism. It's nothing really complicated now. We have this gear here is connected by this Technic uh, kind of a uh, stick and over here we have another gear that's going to these uh, this plate with uh, I don't know what it's called you can see it over here this wavy thing and we have it connected to this whole thing is basically one connection you know so when we spin this the gear goes across this rail and it pulls it over here and it stops because it's limiting the by the lower uh, row of uh, cylinders and that is exactly it ends over here freeing these four studs so this can open now uh, before we had uh, we used these as if you remember from the previous video and that was a cold different thing but this is a lot better now for those that uh, because I'm speaking from experience now it's very important the the whatever is underneath to be smooth because even here when we used this it's very important for the whole row underneath to be the same kind of um, the same level because these gears they really don't like when uh, there is even the slightest difference in uh, whatever is underneath so very important to have uh, the tiles placed properly and yeah just especially you need to see where the weight is like obviously the bricks and basically this side here is where the most of the weight is so from here before I had only these four uh, things over here and I didn't have one here so it's really important to even have one underneath here the fifth one that's hidden because otherwise when it reaches the end, it goes a little bit downward. So if you spin this, it kind of hits the edge of the first one and it doesn't want to go this way. So now it's uh, always smooth, so very important. But yeah, anyway, there's nothing really complicated here, but actually it took me a while to settle on exactly how to do it. So hopefully this is uh, helpful to you in some way.
One thing I want to rant about is this. Now, why am I using this? Because we don't have one by 10 tiles. We have one by eight and one by six. We're using one by sixes here and one by and two by fours, but we don't have one by tens. Now, why is that Lego? I don't know, because I really want to have a tile going from here to here because it's just, it's not possible to make it with less distance like it just doesn't work at least not in this build so this is like a compromise now it's not ideal but it does the job to hide everything and not to fall apart now if i do this really hard this motion it will probably go downwards but i'm not going to do that but anyway like it needs to support the pressure and to kind of slide underneath here properly but yeah, one by 10 tiles, we really need them. Like one by eight is not enough. Like we have one by 10 and one by 12 and two by 10 and two by 12 plates, but we don't have tiles. So what's that about? Like we need those, please. Now let's see how things work from over here. Now, currently I'm not really set on whether I should change any of this because this is the entryway from the side building. Remember, we go from this floor over here, and then on the middle, there's like this little staircase, goes down here, and there's a little corridor here. And this is where the picture with fruit is, and there you tickle the, the, um, the pear. There we go. I got it. The pear. I was wondering what it's called in English. Anyway, you take out that one and it opens. Now, first thing, I'm not sure if this should be in dark red, reddish brown. Like I, I have it in tan as well. Maybe uh, we want to change it. I'm not really sure. And now we have a problem here because in order for this to spin, uh, this needs to be the same level as this over here. And uh, if it is, then we can't cover this uh, dark bluish plate underneath that I don't really want to see. Now, the other thing is that over here we have this one stud that's free. And if I fill it with a kind of a wall here, I don't think this, this is not like it struggles to turn. So we have a few challenges here that I'm not really sure how to solve. Same with this side. Obviously, we can close it fully from one side here, but again, not completely because, yeah, this needs to be able to spin properly and freely. So, hmm. And actually, with just a few tweaks, uh, I placed this panel over here to close it. And then on the other side, I just moved it and created this little gap over here so it would not interact at all so i eliminated the hole completely so we have the same identical space from both sides and over here we just uh replaced the plate underneath with uh tan uh dark uh, what, what is it called dark tan yeah so yeah this way it looks a lot better and i believe this will be changed into tan because yeah, I just this thing just doesn't fit too much. So yeah, I think it's uh, completely fine this way, and you can you can see the corridor is proper. Good stuff. And with that, I believe that's all I have for you today. Again, if you want to give me any kind of input regarding uh, this little section here underneath. You can uh, if you want to tell me something that can be added or improved on or changed of course i'm always open for your suggestions let me uh know whether uh this version is kind of a an improvement of what you, was before or maybe you preferred the uh separate kind of trays that we had the three different compartments that we had before but in my opinion, for the time being, this is a lot better and uh, can't really wait to implement these supports and this kind of idea in the kitchens. Hopefully that will be very, very soon.
Again, I would really appreciate if you like, share and subscribe. It really helps to make this channel more popular and to reach more people. I hope that this little video was uh, interesting to you and I will see you very, very soon with my next update. Hopefully then we'll see the whole Great Hall expanded bigger, longer and taller. Can't wait to show that to you. Until then, happy building and I'll see you next time. Bye for now, guys.